but calorimetry, calorimetry is the measure of heat changes. And in a few weeks, we will do a calorimetry lab. Y'all remember talking uh, last time about the peanut? Okay. We're going to do that lab as well, but there's two different calorimetry labs we'll do. I'm going to talk about actually a different one today. In doing calorimetry, you use a device called a calorimeter. And a calorimeter is a device that measures heat flow. I think I mentioned last time that energy is transferred in two ways. Did I tell you that energy can be transferred by work or by heat last time? No. Okay, well, it's, there's two ways you can transfer energy, work and heat. And in a calorimeter, you're just measuring heat. Uh, the symbol for heat is actually a Q, lowercase cursive Q is your symbol for heat. And it can have different units. Typically, it's joules, kilojoules. That's what we'll be looking at most in here. There's a formula that we use for calorimetry, and that formula is Q equals M S delta T. So what are all those variables? Well, I just told you that Q is heat, and it's going to be joules or kilojoules. You tell me, what is M? M is mass, and mass usually needs to be in grams when you're doing calorimetry. S, can y'all hear that? Yeah, S is actually specific heat. I'm going to talk more about that in just a second. It has some funny little units. It's joules per gram times degree Celsius. Yes, that delta T, you recognize the little triangle, that's a delta, and that little triangle means change in, what's T? Uh, Not time, capital T is temperature, little t is time. Yeah, got lots of different variables. So delta T means change in temperature. You want some paper? Okay. <laughs> uh, how do you measure a change in something? Okay, how do you calculate a change in temperature? It's a difference, it's a subtraction, it's always the final minus initial, right? So it would be the temperature final minus the temperature initial, and that's important. Now y'all are going to be trying to hear it. <laughs> Let's talk about specific heat, because that's a constant. Different substances have a certain value for their specific heat. Um, is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So, does that make sense? Kind of? Okay. Uh, to give you a good example of specific heat, <clears throat> if you wanted to pour yourself a cup of hot coffee and you had two different cups to choose from. You can put it in a styrofoam cup, or let's pick up a, a camping cup, you know those metal camping cups? Think about if you put coffee in the styrofoam cup versus in that metal camping cup. I mean, do you have a preference as to which one you would want your coffee in and why? Or would it not matter to you? Hot coffee. Hot chocolate. <laughs> How about hot chocolate? Or apple cider? Huh? You what now? 
Why styrofoam? Do y'all not have a preference or do you have a preference? The styrofoam would stay warm. The styrofoam would stay warm. Right, and you could touch the outside. What's going to happen to that metal cup if you put a hot drink in it? The metal's going to get hot, isn't it? And depending on how hot your drink is, you might not can touch that metal. You certainly wouldn't want to put it on your lip, right, and try to drink it. But the styrofoam cup, you're going to be able to pick that up, right? And it, the coffee's probably going to be too hot to drink. You're going to have to blow it. What's the difference between the styrofoam and the metal? The specific heat. That's the difference. Because you're putting, um, assume you put the exact same amount of coffee in both cups and that it's at the exact same temperature. That coffee is giving off heat, right? Q is heat. That coffee is releasing heat. The coffee um, is releasing heat to the surroundings. The cup, the air, your hand, etc. We talked about system and surroundings last week. So both the metal cup and the styrofoam cup are absorbing the same amount of heat, but that metal, when it absorbs the heat, it experiences a greater temperature change than the styrofoam. So which one would you say, metal or styrofoam, which one would you say has a higher specific heat? Styrofoam. Because substances that have a higher specific heat can absorb more heat and not experience as great a temperature change, okay? If it has a very low specific heat, that means it doesn't have to absorb a lot of heat and the temperature of that substance will change. In your books, if you guys are on page 196, in your books at the bottom, there's a table, table 5.2, that lists some different specific heats for different substances. And like I, I said a second ago, those are standard values, what, depending on what type of metal it is or what your substance is, things have a certain specific heat. And that's what we're going to do in lab in a few weeks. You guys are going to get a metal, and you're not going to know what the metal is, and you're going to measure its specific heat and use the specific heat to identify the metal. Okay, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But if you look at the bottom of page 196 at the different specific heats of substances, uh, there's two columns of data. Do you see anything on that table that has a really high specific heat? Water. Water's specific heat is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Can you think um, of why that's significant environmentally, biologically? What percent of your body's water? It's like 70, yes. It's pretty large percent of us is water. We're about 70% water. Why is that important, heat-wise and temperature? Right. It helps us to regulate our temperature, right? Because our body can absorb a lot of heat, but we're not going to experience a temperature change. Um, what happens when people get dehydrated? And they're maybe at football practice, and they get dehydrated. They get too hot, they have heat stroke, some of them die because their body, they cannot regulate their body temperature when they're dehydrated. What percent of the earth is water? Like 75%. Can you think of why that's important? I mean, that means that our earth can absorb a lot of heat and not experience a temperature change. We don't have to worry about temperatures being unbearably hot. The humidity is bad enough to deal with, right? We don't have to worry about high temperatures. Let's um, do a calculation with the calorimetry formula. Calculate the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 50 milliliters of water from 21.5 degrees Celsius to 87.8 .8 degrees Celsius. So we know our formula for calorimetry is Q equals MS delta T. So what I would do is line up my variables and what, what do I know, what am I looking for? <coughs> what is Q? Q is heat. How, does that tell us how much heat? 
Is that what we're looking for? What is M? M is actually mass. Do I have the mass of the water? That's the volume, though. Is that 50 milliliters? Is it also 50 grams? It is. Is it that way for every substance that the volume and the mass are the same number? Mm -mm. It's only that way for water. Why? Because the density is one. Did y'all get what I said? You're looking at me funny, Shelby. <laughs> the density of water is one gram per milliliter. What does that mean, guys? That the mass and volume are always the same number, right? If you've got 50 milliliters, you've got 50 grams. Maybe y'all didn't need that explained, but the looks on your faces said that I needed to elaborate on that a little bit more. Um, what's S? It's specific heat. Does this problem give us a specific heat? It gives us a temperature. How do we know it? If you know it's water, don't you know? If you know the identity of the substance, can't you look it up on that table? You can. Don't forget you have that table there on page 196 if you need it. Okay, what is it? The specific heat is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And what is delta T? Tell me what minus what? It's 87.8 minus the 21.5. Now, pause there. I know y'all are ready to punch in and get an answer and be done with it. But calculating delta T. I told you a second ago that it is final minus initial. So, you cannot always look at the problem and say the big one minus the little one. Because sometimes the final temperature could be 87 and the initial 21. Like in this example, but couldn't it be reversed as well? Sometimes you're heating things up, sometimes you're cooling things down. So, it's going to be important, that final minus initial. Can you tell from this wording, of course, that it goes from 21.5 to... 87.8. So there's your final minus initial. And now plug your numbers in. And tell me what you guys get for Q. Big number, right? What do you get for Q? Yeah, 13,869. I'm going to put that in scientific notation. I'm going to write 1.39 times 10 to the 4. You don't have to put it in scientific notation. That's just how I want to record my answer. But you do need three significant figures in your answer. Correct? What are the units of Q? Aren't the units joules? Do you see that? Because grams cancels and degrees Celsius cancels, so I'm left with joules. Can you take that answer and convert it to kilojoules? How many kilojoules would that be? Mm -hmm. It would be 13.9 kilojoules. <laughs> 